I really need to make a footstool for here. Right now I have a bucket <laughs> turned upside down with a piece of foam insulation on top of it. And on top of that I have a pillow. <laughs> so it kind of gets out of uh, position occasionally. So maybe that will make a good project. Footstool for the office. I also need a drawer over here so maybe I'll make a drawer for the desk and a footstool to go along with it. Not that those two things are related but they'll both go in here. Anyway on to the topic of this video or at least the first topic because there are a few things I want to talk about here but I'll get to the title topic to begin with so that people won't get too pissed off because people get pissed off if they have to sit through a whole bunch of you know, mindless talk to get to what they actually, you know, came for in the video title. And so since the video title is Do Woodworking for the Right Reasons, I'll talk about that now. <laughs> uh, I keep getting comments and I'm sure, uh, I'm not sure, I know that anybody else that does do-it-yourself type videos, woodworking, doesn't matter what it is, you'll get comments from people asking how much does it cost to do that and if you're asking how much something costs that you want to do then you're probably thinking about it in the wrong way you're probably thinking that you can do this to save money and in my opinion that's the wrong reason to do things yourself now don't get me wrong it's certainly possible to save money doing things yourself, especially things that would normally cost a lot of money that you want, that you absolutely need. Say if you need a table and you have no table, like me, I have no table. <laughs> so I'm going to build a table one of these days. But if you absolutely need a table and you need to do it um, economically because you don't have the money to buy even a used table, you can get some, you know, lumber, scrounge it up, maybe pallet wood, put in the time to take the nails out and break it all down. And then you can just stick this thing together with basic tools like a hammer and a handsaw that you maybe picked up somewhere at a used store for two bucks or something like that, or at a garage sale. It's possible to do that kind of thing and save a lot of money but then you have to be able to accept what you wind up with you're not going to get top quality work using junk material and you know just basic tools you can don't get me wrong again you can you know make the proverbial silk purse out of the sow's ear and do it using the very basic tools but the usual missing ingredient there with a beginning woodworker is experience and talent and skill. And those are things that you need to develop to, you know, make that silk purse out of the sow's ear and use only hand tools to do it. The better reason to do it yourself is that you love doing it. You want to do that kind of thing. You know, in, in a lot of people's case, they don't really have any other choice. They have to do it. It's something that they're driven to do. You know, it's like they're born to it or something like that. I know I was. I always wanted to do things, make things, you know, uh, investigate how things work. You know, when I was a little kid, I took apart every fucking toy that I ever got for whatever occasion. And it used to drive my parents nuts. I'd even take apart, you know, the neighbor's kids' <laughs> toys. And I was known for that. But the correct way to look at that is that that was my training. This is where I learned the ropes as far as things go. The thing that I learned most about taking things apart, especially complex things, is to appreciate how complex they are and how difficult it would be to put them back together or make them work after you've taken them apart. And especially if you had the notion that you could possibly somehow improve the way it works or 
make you know your own version of it. It's very enlightening when you do that. So I pity the kids that are not allowed to take apart their toys when they're young. I mean, that, for me, that was the best thing about having the toy was to take it apart and see how it worked. And if you're one of those kids that didn't feel the urge to take apart your toys when you were young, that's probably a good indicator that you're not going to be strongly into the do-it-yourself type deal. Now look what I've done to my lav mic here. I've coiled that up. I should have had my fidget spinner. That would have, you know, stopped me from doing this. Now I've got to do it. Uh, another way of looking at the do-it-yourself type thing, okay, say you're a woodworker and your only real interest is making furniture, you know? So you want to make furniture, special things for yourself or for your, you know, loved ones or whatever. And that's all you're really interested in. But you need woodworking jigs and tools and whatnot to do that more efficiently or better. Say you want just want a, a specialized tool for something and you know you can build it. That's a good reason to do it right there. Rather than, you know, going out of pocket and going out and getting something that may be out of your price range, you have the ability and say you have the parts or whatever, and so you take the time to make it and you have it. And the good thing about of making a tool or a jig or something like that yourself is not just that you have it to use, it's also that you understand how it works and you can fix it if it breaks. And that's, I think, is one of the more valuable things to building stuff yourself. As many of you know, I do shop projects mainly and you know I build uh, specialized jigs and tools and stuff like that and storage and so on and so forth for the shop. Uh, stuff I was talking about before, the stuff that if you're a woodworker and you want to be making furniture, a lot of these projects will help you out because they'll make you more efficient at what you're doing. So I also make plans for some of these projects as well and that's what I'm doing today. I'm working on the router table plans. I'm trying to finish those up. Uh, I was supposed to finish this a couple weeks ago actually but I got sidetracked. The idea is to try to get this done today or tomorrow which probably won't happen <laughs> because it takes a lot of work and um, I don't think I can get it by this weekend. It'll probably be by next weekend that I'll be doing the build video on my red channel for the router table and that will be that and I'm making plans for that that will be sold on the website and let me just say that making plans to sell sucks it's probably <laughs> of all the jobs that I've had over my you know life it's probably one of the worst ones and definitely the worst paying one uh, imaginable because okay I sell say I sell this plan for the router table for say eight bucks and I've already got oh I would say possibly 40 hours into the design of it so far and I really haven't even built it yet so and it's in the building that I discover other issues that need to be you know fixed up and the plans are not complete yet so there's quite a lot of time into it and I've said before that it can take years literally years before I start to even start to get repaid for the time that I put into a plan at that low price you know you say okay if this sells for eight bucks a, a, a pop Okay, I don't get the $8, of course. I get maybe 6 out of that because there are fees, of course, with everything. Nothing is free. And then of the $6 there, you know, the government's got to have their share. The legalized mafia that that is, they have to take their taste. So that leaves me with maybe 3 or 4 So, <laughs> you know what, I, by the time... You know, how many of those do you have to sell before it actually starts to become worth it? And especially when you consider how many hours are involved. So making plans to sell online, especially for this kind of stuff, 
sucks because there's just too much effort and time that goes into it. So I'm going to talk a few seconds about maintaining motivation and I think that this is a problem that a lot of people that start doing this have problems with down the road. I know that I occasionally do. Um, there are days when I get up and I'm all full of piss and vinegar to get going and as soon as I start something, something goes wrong and immediately I take a nosedive. My motivation takes a nosedive and I stop. And I come in and I, you know, put on a movie or something like that, because that's the nature of, you know, working for yourself, especially if you're working for yourself from home. You, you know, there's nobody, you know, harping on you to get this done, get that done. You have no boss, not really. And as far as being self-employed, like I've been self-employed for most of my adult life. And this is the most autonomous, I guess you could say, form of being self-employed right here. Because, you know, even when I was self-employed, say, doing my carpentry job before, I still have people that I had to answer to. I still have people on the phone saying, okay, well, I need this done. I need that done. And when can you get here to do it? Here, I don't have anybody saying anything like that. So I'm free. I can stop recording this video right this fucking second and go and watch, you know, Star Wars or something like that. Right now, I can drop it. When I'm supposed to be working, middle of the day, I can go do that. And that's the thing. I mean, there's nobody, you know, kicking my ass to get out of bed in the morning to get up and do this. And that can be difficult, I'll tell you. I mean, when I started this, I was working full time as well. And I had lots of motivation then to do this as well and that has waned over the over the past few years part of it is the idea that whatever i'm making whatever i'm doing has to be good enough to put on there when i first started it really didn't matter whether it was good enough or not i was going to put it on and if it did well it did well if it didn't who cares because you don't have to care about that when you're starting out. The other thing is it didn't feel like work in the beginning. And when something doesn't feel like work and then you enjoy doing it, then that automatically makes your motivation higher. So it's a struggle, it's a battle, I've got to say. So, you know, if you see somebody falling behind on their output with the videos or whatever, I would say that that's usually what's happening. You know, they're they're losing motivation or they're distracted with some other stuff that's more important at the time.